Hello, everyone. It's my great pleasure to be here. Um, I'm going to share with you today, um, you know, art can contribute to the future. Art can be a way of a w building world. And sometimes it's interesting to also look at more underground artistic projects who are actually creating worlds, who are actually in the process of uh, um, letting those new worlds emerge. So today I'm going to, to speak to you about the Mesopolis. It's a global trend. It's, uh, it started around 2012 and 13. The idea was launched at that time, but it didn't come out really. The first real experiment um, came around 2019 in Egypt, and let me can I have my first slide, please? Yes, no. Sorry, that's the first one. <laughs> so this is the first episode where the Mesopolis, so the Mesopolis is really uh, the idea of creating an utopia, a concrete utopia, which is combining urban resilience with the creative force of artistic communities. And the movement was created by a community of free dancers, people who practice dance, are in a free movement uh, with a meditative dimension and also a community of artists, dancers and makers who started that first episode of the Mesopolis. And it was in Egypt because they encountered, they met with the biodynamic farm in Egypt that was already in this resilient process. So it was really an occasion to combine that artistic force. And the, the base of that uh, initiative was also that they had implemented a new solution to capture the water from the clouds coming above the, uh, the desert. You know, in the desert, the water is a very scarce resource. So they found that solution so that they could collect water from the sky, very tiny drops, and irrigate that new agricultural solution. So that, it generated a first community. I think some people from the Irosan community were part of it at some point. It's really the same uh, philosophy. So that was the first prototype, I would say, of the Mesopolis. It's still going on, and you can look online if you're more interested. I'm going to switch to the second version of the Mesopolis that was continuing from the first and taking lessons as well from the first version. So it's in Thailand. And in this case, it's more like a, a community of a creative that uh, met with Michel Bowens. Michel Bowens is really uh, an important person on the economy of commons. Uh, with his wife, who is Thai. They both live in the, near Chiang Mai, and together with that artistic community, they created that second mesopolis, so another prototype huh, where the artistic community also developed new ways. And they started in 2019, and with the COVID, you know, with the lockdown, they really accelerated the movement because they were kind of stuck. So they really went into building also those amazing houses and they took lessons from the first version by also being much more keen on generating their own economy and really giving more meaning to the creative economy, the learning economy also. It's very based on like, you know, well-being, care, learning. It's really also trying to, to be more in this immaterial dimension. We, with resilience, we tend to be very much in the fabrication, alternative fabrication and the material aspect, but they also work very strongly on the immaterial dimension. Like really what can be an economy of the immaterial and imagination. So that's the second version and it's in Thailand and it's still in progress. Huh? And I'm going to switch to the last version and the last version each time it's growing. So it's really an utopia that is based on experimenting each time. And the third Mesopotamia it's like this time it's a network, it's three cities who are willing to experiment and create their own mesopolis. Um, and one is in is Locarno in, the, in, um, uh, in Italy and, uh, um, and uh, Leira in Portugal and uh, Arles in the south of France. It's three cities who are joining who wants to create their own mesopolis. And this time, they, each time they want to really work with the genius Loki, yeah, the, the specificity of the ground. And it's this time it's really based on you know, tackling the issues of the water, the ocean, maybe coming back to the roots of the first mesopolis where the water was a, a scarce resource. So the point of the third mesopolis is also to recreate a, a, an utopic habitat and a local economy that really play with that imaginary of the water and the possibility to, to have a blue city, a blue economy, and a blue future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rafael.
um, for this motionless uh, journey. We'd like to know where and when maybe we can go visit these uh, experiments. I mean, I named the cities, huh? so you can really look online for plenty of information. If you want to go for your holidays, uh, I'm sure you, you'll, you'll figure out how to find them. And uh, um, no, <laughs> it's a total <laughs> fake. Sorry. <laughs> As you may have seen now, uh, Raphael is an artist and a futurist. And we think that we couldn't really move on to our session without experimenting together the power of uh, fiction. And this is why um, we invited uh, Raphael to share this ongoing research project that she's been working on with Mesopolis lately. Yeah, it's uh, just to say a word, it's fiction, future fiction based on images is really a way of exploring what could be possible future and really create a sense of that could be real. So that's the point of this performance also too. Why not? You know, it looks so feasible. Voilà. Thank you, Thank you for, for the invitation. This, uh, fictional performance. <laughs>